how good is your traditional English? Let's find out. Hi everyone, it's me. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Alana and I'm a Canadian, but I have been living in the UK for the last six years. And today we are going to see if I can guess these 17 historical British sayings. I don't have high hopes, I'll be honest. If you'd like to play along, make sure to post your score in the comments. See if you can beat me, which granted is probably not very difficult. <laughs> If you like this video and you want to watch more videos about a foreigner living in the UK, please consider subscribing. But without further ado, let's go. All right, our first traditional British slang, pearls before swine. I don't know. <laughs> pearls before swine, it makes me think of good things before bad things. So maybe, I don't know, let's take a leap. Look after yourself before you look after others. That's not really a good motto, is it? Do you know what pearls before swine means? Have you even used it? I've never heard of it. Meaning, you are wasting your time by offering something that is helpful or valuable to someone who does not appreciate it. Fair. And that's actually a good life lesson. Number two, we have nail your colors to the mast. Now I imagine this is potentially, okay, mast as in like a ship, the color of your sail indicated who you were or what kind of ship it was. So nail your colors to the mast means something um, about showing your true colors or being true to yourself something, something. I'm gonna go with my, my gut instinct. It's almost never right. <laughs> Nail your colors to the mast, meaning show who you really are. Something about, something like that, I don't know. Meaning to declare your beliefs firmly and openly. That's kind of what I was trying to say, right? Do I get that? I think I get that one. I think that one counts as a win. <laughs> Number three. Colder than a witch's tit. Can I say that on YouTube? It's too late, I've just done it. I've got to imagine this means extremely cold. I'm not totally sure why we're talking about witches, <laughs> but here we are. Meaning cold weather thought to originate from street slang. The suggestion is that witches were evil and cold blooded and therefore could not retain body heat. Fascinating. Next we have Pip Pip. Now, okay, stereotypically I've heard Pip Pip only in movies. I've never actually heard anyone verbally say that out loud since I've been living in the UK. I don't actually know what the, what it means. You know, it's like the thing it's, you know, it makes me think of Mary, Pop Mary Poppins, right? But what does Pip Pip actually mean? I couldn't give you a definition. Can you? Do you know, is, am I just stupid? <laughs> Maybe. Meaning, used to say goodbye in a cheery fashion, its first known use was in 1907 and is thought to have originated by imitating the sound of a horn. Number five, our traditional British slang, know your onions. I feel like I have heard this before and I don't remember the context, but what I kind of remember, know your onions, as in know, know what you need to know. <laughs> know your job, know your business, know, Know your onions. <laughs> know what you need to know. That is so not descriptive. <sighs> Do you know what I mean? Meaning, to know your onions, to be experienced or knowledgeable about a subject. That's kind of what I meant. Do I get that as a point? Probably not. I don't even know, how, how many have I gotten? One. <laughs> I've gotten one, let's carry on. Number six, on our journey through Traditional English phrases, a nod is as good as a wink. I mean, it's a great phrase, but what does it mean? That's a good question. A nod is as good as a wink. So what is a wink? A wink is like, 
um, a confirmation. It could be like a flirty thing. So a, a nod is, I, I don't know. I don't know this one. Meaning, you don't need to be blatant with a signal if someone is willing to carry out a task. This phrase dates back to the 16th century. The longer version is a nod is as good as a wink to a blind horse. Number seven, we have a stitch in time saves nine. A stitch in time saves nine. That makes me think that you're saving nine minutes. So if you are properly prepared for something, you're gonna save hassle in the long run. That seems like it could be right, don't you think? A stitch in time saves nine, meaning if you sort out a problem immediately, it may save a lot of extra work later. Not exactly what I said, but kind of? I don't think I get that as a point either. Anyway, these are difficult. I don't know if you guys hear these phrases anymore or have ever heard these phrases in real life. I haven't, other than I think Know Your Onions was the only one. And I got that one wrong anyway. Number eight, ready for the knacker's yard. Knackered usually means extremely tired, you're exhausted. Ready for the knackered's, does this mean like ready for the grave? Like for the ultimate sleep, for the graveyard, for the sleep yard? Do you know what, I'm, do you know what I mean? Ready for the knacker's yard. Ready to be eternally tired. Ready to die. That's grim. Meaning, in a state of ruin or failure due to having become useless or obsolete. A knacker's yard refers to a slaughterhouse for old or injured horses. Oh my god, you guys. We're still going. We're at nine. How are you guys doing? Better than me, probably. Number nine. I've dropped a clangor. I've dropped a clangor. Clangor is like, makes me think of something loud. So you've dropped something loud. That doesn't mean anything. So perhaps you have done something big or a bunch of people are, you've done something and a bunch of people are looking at you. That sounds reasonable. It doesn't matter. Every time I think my answer sounds reasonable, I read it and I go, oh yeah, that makes sense. Are you guys ready? I've dropped a clangor, meaning to make a very bad or embarrassing mistake. I'm so close with these, but so far. Now, even though I am Canadian, I come from an English speaking country, an English speaking family. There is so much about the English language that I am learning here in the UK. They might as well be two different languages, like entirely. Number 10, a fly in the ointment, I have heard this one. A fly in the ointment is something like, oh, how do you explain that? A fly in the ointment is like something annoying or wrong or bad has kind of messed up the plan. So a fly in the ointment is something that, negative that has messed up your original plan. Let's see what they say meaning a minor irritation that spoils the success or enjoyment of something. Number 11, we have keen as mustard. Now, I've got it. I feel like I've heard this one. I don't know if it was in real life. I want to say it was more in TV or film. Keen as mustard, as in like really um, excited for something or like you're really keen. I don't know why mustard is like good. Keen as mustard is you're really keen. You're really excited. You're really pumped. Meaning extremely eager or enthusiastic. Yes, you guys, I think I've gotten two now. On our journey through traditional English phrases, number 12, a flash in the pan. Now I recognize this, again, probably only from movies. I don't know how to explain it. Something um, like quick or like a big reaction. I'm just gonna say a quick reaction. Something's like, oh, 
happened. Meaning, a flash in the pan, a thing or person whose sudden but brief success is not repeated or repeatable. Interesting. Not what I thought. The phrase originated sometime during the late 17th century when flintlock muskets were used. An attempt to fire a musket that resulted in gunpowder flaring up, but no ball firing was referred to a flash in the pan. The more you know. Are you guys learning anything? <laughs> I feel like I'm learning too much. I'm not gonna be able to remember any of this. Anyway, 13, tickety boo. Again, I'm starting to recognize these, but not well enough that I could, in my own words, describe what it meant. Tickety-boo means like, um, just like that. Um, it means tickety-boo, just, yeah, I just wanna say just like that, almost like sorted. And I know that sounds weird in my voice. I mean, sorted. When something means sorted and you go sorted, Tickety-boo, I feel like is the same sort of idea. It's just like, it's done, it's done and dusted. Tickety-boo. That's not gonna be right. Big surprise. Meaning, everything is fine or in good order. Everything is fine. Yeah, I guess that does make sense. Tickety-boo. Would you say everything is tickety-boo? That sounds kind of funny though, doesn't it? Maybe your grandma might say that. <laughs> Maybe you might say that, I don't know. Next up, we have 14, which is a load of cod swallop. I've definitely heard this one. Can I explain what it means? Not really. A load of cod swallop, I think is like a load of rubbish, a load of garbage. It's bad, it's negative, it's no. A load of cod swallop, if, you, if someone said something to you, like they were lying to you, and you'd be like, that's a load of cod swallop. That's not a bad example, isn't it? Meaning, words or ideas that are foolish or untrue. That's basically what I said, right? Guys, I'm a pro at this. All right, next up we got 15, a curtain twitcher. Okay, let's think about this rationally. A curtain twitcher is gonna be somebody who is standing at the window, peeking through the curtains, like spying on everybody or like eavesdropping on somebody else. So you're a curtain twitcher. For some reason that sounds really bad. If you are somebody who's eavesdropping, who's spying on people, you're, you're twitching behind the curtains. The curtains are twitching because you're sort of peeking through them. That's a great example, isn't it? Meaning, a nosy person who watches his or her neighbors typically from a curtained window. You guys, wow, I am on a roll. Knock on wood, knock on wood. Number 16, we have knickers in a twist. Definitely heard this one, knickers in a twist, uh, meaning like underwear in a twist, meaning you're all sort of bent out of sorts. Um, don't get your knickers in a twist, as in don't get so uptight or, um, you know, don't get your knickers in a twist. Just relax. Someone who is like tightly wound, uptight about something, you know, just relax. Don't get your knickers in a twist. Meaning to become upset about something that is not very important. I am a professional British linguist. Can I add that to like my resume? Then we have dead as a doornail. I've heard this one. This one's gotta mean like somebody who is just completely stupid. Dead as a doornail. There's nothing going on behind the eyes. Um, they are just very dumb, very unintelligent. Can we say that? I think that's what it is, isn't it? Meaning emphatically dead. It is suggested it is linked to coffins being hammered shut. Oh, <laughs> never mind. Now it should be no surprise that I did not do very well. <laughs> I love life here in the UK, um, but something about traditional 
words or slang I just really struggle with. But how did you guys do? Make sure to leave a comment down below with your score. What did you get? All 17? If you say all 17, I know you're lying. If you'd like to watch more videos where I embarrass myself guessing British slang, make sure to check out this video where I tried to guess Victorian phrases. Um, it was pretty embarrassing. As always, thank you guys so much for watching and until next time, bye.